This is Module 4, Video 3, High Pass and Band Pass Filter Design, EE300 Linear Circuit Analysis 2. In this video, we'll review our previous work. We'll look at what a high pass second order section looks like. And then we'll talk about high pass filter design. We'll have a brief moment on uh, band pass and band stop filters, and then a summary. So to review, previously we saw the saddle and key second order low pass circuit, and we used it to implement Butterworth and Chebyshev higher order, fourth, fifth, sixth, if we want, uh, uh, filter, low pass filters. In this video, let's look at the high pass second order section, and then we'll use it to build some uh, higher order filters. So the high pass transfer function, this would be like the output of a RLC series circuit across the inductor with some possible gain K. So it's S squared over S squared plus two zeta omega naught S plus omega zero squared. And here we can look at it for different values of uh, uh, the damping factor zeta, starting at one, that's the uh, lower blue line, and then as uh, zeta decreases, gets closer to zero, then you get this peak behavior around omega equals omega zero. And you see that for 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 0.05 is quite peaky. Um, so we can normalize, uh, uh, divide out omega zero squared as we did before, and so everything's normalized by uh, uh, around the undamped natural frequency omega zero. And so we have the transfer function in this form. This will be useful for design purposes. So the high frequency gain is K, uh, and uh, the angle at that gain uh, is going to be zero. Uh, at omega equals omega naught, the gain is K over two zeta. So there's that one over two zeta factor uh, from the uh, 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 nearness to the j-axis of the poles. And at that point, the angle is going to be 90 degrees. And this starts with a, uh, starts at zero with a double zero at s equals zero and rolls up at 40 dB per decade. And the angle is going to start at 180 degrees. So here's the saddle and key uh, transfer function again, the saddle and key filter. Uh, and in this case, now we want to make the uh, impedances in this branch here, the series looking impedances, instead of being resistors like we do with the low pass, we want those to be capacitors. So the impedance will be one over SC1 and one over SC2. And then we're gonna make these other two branches, uh, Z3 and Z4 branch, be resistors. So here's one over R1 for Y3 and one over R2 for Y4. And so that gives us this circuit over here. Uh, this is a high pass saddle and key uh, circuit. When you plug these impedances and the admittances in, to the uh, uh, form up here, you do a little algebra <coughs> and you end up with this form R1, R2, C1, C2, S square. And then the middle term's different here. It's not the same as it was and that, that, uh, as in the uh, low pass case. So R2, C2 plus R2, C1 plus R1, C2 minus mu times R2, C2, S uh, plus one in the denominator. And again, we get a mu R1, R2, C1, C2, S square in the numerator. So there's our high pass transfer function. It's got the right form. Now we just have to match up with the omega zeros and the two zetas, etc. So we're trying to make it line up with K S over omega naught squared over S over omega naught squared plus two zeta S over omega naught plus one. And as, uh, with the low pass design, we want to pick the R's and the C's and the gain of the uh, uh, non-inverting amplifier stage to give us the K and the omega naught and the zeta uh, for the specification. And there's going to be two ways, just like there was for the low pass. There's the equal elements where you have picked the same resistance. R1 and R2 are both R. C1 and C2 are both C. The two capacitors are the same. Uh, that's called the equal elements method. Uh, and the unity gain method, you make the two capacitors the same, and then you let this uh, uh, non-inverting amplifier be a voltage follower. So uh, we'll make an infinite resistance to ground and we'll have the uh, output feedback directly to the minus terminal without a resistor there. So equal elements, <coughs> uh, again, R1 equals R2 equals R, C1 equals C2 equals C, uh, and we plug these in here, we get mu times RCS all squared, uh, the RCS is squared, and then RCS squared plus RC times three minus mu S plus one. So again, it's the same kind of pattern. Can, how do we make this match up? Well, it's the very same. RC has got to be one over omega zero. That shows up in multiple places and we can use it that way. And that leaves three minus mu to equal two zeta. And uh, we won't get equality unless mu happens to equal uh, two zeta or equal K there. And, and that's not likely to happen. So we'll have to have an additional stage of DC gain uh, to, or actually high frequency gain in this case to uh, fix up the gain. Uh, so here's how you do it. Um, with unity gain, uh, 
I'm sorry. So for Unity Gain, the uh, uh, the non-inverting amplifier has a gain of one. We pick the two capacitors to be the same, and when you plug that in, now we have uh, uh, R1, R2, C squared, S squared, plus two R1, C1, C, S, uh, plus one in the denominator. Uh, and how to match those up. Okay, well, first, 1 over omega 0 uh, squared has to equal R1, R2, uh, C squared. So um, that ought to be a 1 over omega 0 squared there. So omega 0 has to be 1 over C root R1, R2. And then 2 R1, C has to be 2 zeta over omega 0. So zeta has to equal the root R1, R2, plugging back in the value from omega 0 we found earlier. So we can pick R2. Um, and then R1 is going to be zeta squared times R2. Now, in the low pass, we picked C1 and let C2 equal zeta squared. So there's not, it's not perfectly symmetric here. So R1 is a zeta squared uh, R2, and then C is going to be 1 over zeta omega naught R2. Uh, so again, it's pretty straightforward how to get the uh, other R. You pick one R, you pick R2, you get R1, and you get C back from those. And then again, you're going to have to correct the DC gain because you're going to have a gain of one here. Unless you have a gain of one from your necessary for your design uh, from your design. So let's do this. Uh, for high pass, the specification is we're going to have our pass band is going to be on the high frequency, omega C, omega greater than some omega C, and it's going to be for all in uh, omega greater than omega C. That's the pass band. The stop band is going to be over on the left side of the graph uh, between zero and omega min. Uh, and then the in-between region is going to be the transition region. And again, the sleep, so steeper the slope is there, then uh, uh, the higher the order filter we're going to have to have. So the form of this is K as it was uh, uh, in the low pass, except now instead of, we're going to invert the frequency variable. So instead of having Q sub N of S, we're going to have Q sub, uh, instead of having Q sub N of S over omega C, we're going to have Q sub N of omega C over S. And then when you clear that out, that's how you get the S stuff into the numerator, <coughs> and, and you'll see how this works. We're going to have the scale factor K. We're going to use the same polynomials. So we don't have a different, we have the same set of polynomials we use, the Butterworth polynomials and the Chebyshev polynomials. And we've already uh, argued that when we use omega C over S instead of S over omega C, we're going to pick up the poles of the zeros in the numerator. And if that's an nth order polynomial, we'll pick up n zeros there. So uh, for Butterworth, the uh, form, uh, instead of being uh, uh, k over root 1 plus omega over omega c to the 2n, the, the omega over omega c is inverted, the omega c over omega. And then when you multiply through by omega over omega c to the n, uh, and bring that into the de uh, denominator, you're going to get a omega over omega c to the n. That's your n poles at the origin. And then you're going to get that Butterworth uh, low pass form in the denominator. So this is going to cause the low frequencies to grow at 20 n dB per decade. Uh, at high frequencies, where both of these are large, this is going to cancel out and give you the gain K, so it's going to be flat. And when omega equals omega C, you're going to get root 2 in the denominator, so you're going to be down 3 dB. The order is determined in the same way, except omega and omega C are reversed. Uh, uh, that should be omega min, not omega. But those are reversed uh, as compared to they were in the low pass. So the transfer function design is H max Q sub n, the Butterworth polynomial, omega C over S. Let's see how this works. It makes more sense when you actually see it in, in, uh, in play. So design a Butterworth high pass filter with 20 dB gain in the pass band, 40 dB attenuation. These are always relative to the input. So this is a H max of 10, H min of 0.01. Stop band edge is going to be a thousand radians per second, so uh, it's going to. We want that pass of that stop band to go between zero and a thousand, and then the cutoff frequency starts at four thousand radians a second, and the pass band is for frequencies omega greater than four thousand. So we plug that into the formula. So h max over h min squared minus one. Take the log of that, and then omega c over omega min. Take the log of that. Take the ratio. Take a half and round up and you get five. So we need a fifth order, order Butterworth. So instead of, so here's the S plus one, S squared plus 0.618 S plus one, S squared plus 1.618 S plus one, except for S we put in omega C over S. So that's how it works out. So you put it in like this, and then to get it into the form where you can actually use it, we're gonna have to multiply through by S over 4,000 to the fifth power. 
and one of those goes with the S over 4,000 plus one, the first order term. One goes with uh, uh, one squared, S over 4,000 squared goes with the second order section, and S over 4,000 squared goes with the other second order section. And so now you can see how we can use the polynomial. That we, have, we know where the poles are, we know the omega zero, we know the two zeta, and now we can use that with that high pass saddle and key circuit. Uh, omega zero is 4,000, we're going to pick, uh, for equal elements, we'll pick R equals 10K, and that makes C equal to 0. 0.0025 microfarads, 2.5 nanofarads. Our uh, zeta 1, our, our 2 zeta 1 is 0. 0.6180, which means that our first game stage has to have a gain of 3 minus 0. 0.6180, or 2.382. Our, our 2 zeta 2 is 1.618, so our second gain stage has a gain of 3.1618, 3 minus 1.618, which is 1.382. We need a gain of 10. We've got 2.38 times 1.38, which is a, a divide that into 10, you're left with 3.03. .03. So we need an additional three uh, gain stage of three, basically, in our first order uh, circuit here. So here's one of the Salomon key sections. Uh, again, we picked R equals 100K ohm, C equal to 2.5 nanofarads, and here's the gain of 2.38, 100 and 138K ohms. Here's the second, it's got the same uh, 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 R, same omega zero because it's a Butterworth, so you've got the same R and C for the equal elements method. And now this one has a gain of 1.38. And now here's our first order with a pole at 4,000. Uh, 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 and it's got a, a output is across the resistor because it's a, 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 a first order high pass. And here's the gain of 3.038, uh, 3 which is uh, basically 3.04. So here's our equal elements uh, fifth order Butterworth. A fifth or sixth order would take uh, um, a, a second op, a third op amp here, and then the sixth order may even take an additional one depending on, on your gain factors there. Okay, uh, the Chebyshev is done the same way. We use the uh, omega C over omega as the argument to the Chebyshev polynomials. The denominator is one plus Chebyshev polynomial. Uh, for low frequencies, again, it increases 20 NDB per decade. It's flat in high frequencies. It's actually going to have a ripple in high frequencies. It's not going to be perfectly flat. It's going to have that 3 dB ripple, and it's going to hit the uh, 3 dB down uh, at um, omega equals omega C. It's going to have steeper slopes near omega C, which means it's going to meet the spec uh, with a smaller end than the Butterworth does. And the order is determined the same way, inverse hyperbolic cosine of square root of h max over h min squared minus 1 divided by uh, high inverse hyperbolic cosine of omega c over omega n. Take the greatest integer, round that up to the next integer. And then if n is odd, <coughs> we use h max for k, and if n is even, we use h max over root 2. And so um, let's design the same filter. So when we plug this in, we get a fourth order filter. That's good. We had a fifth order Butterworth and it's a fourth order Chebyshev. And that's again what the logic says. You should be able to meet the specs with a lower order. But the Chebyshev we know is an uglier filter in terms of just having the mathematics to do here. So here's our 4,000 over S for uh, uh, S we're plugging in. And there's that 0.9502 in the denominator from the uh, Chebyshev design. We see that on this. So that's the radius of the first uh, Chebyshev uh, polynomial here in this fourth order, and the two zeta is 0.1789. The second one has a radius, a unit radius, if, uh, for a unit um, cutoff frequency. The second one has a, a radius of 0.4425, and then it's got a zeta, a, point, a two zeta of 0.9276. So we can, uh, again, uh, multiply through by each of the proper terms uh, in numerator denominator. So we pick up uh, uh, 0.9502 S over 4,000 squared in the numerator to go with the first polynomial. And you can see now we have something S uh, squared instead of having over S minus two here. And then we pick up the uh, 0.4425 over 4,000 S in the numerator. And we get that as the first, uh, the S squared term and also the S term and then uh, we finally uh, figure out what 4,000 divided by 0.9502 is. It's 4,210. And what 4,000 divided by 0.4425 is, it's 9040. Uh, and so this uh, 
the circuit we're going to design is going to have the first one's going to have an omega zero of 4210 and a two zeta of 0.1789 and the second one's going to have an omega zero of 9040 and a two zeta of 0.9276 and we're going to have the scale factor of 7.07 .07 out front so let's do the unity gain method for this one our two zeta is a 0.7654 making the first zeta 0.3827 and omega zero is 4210. We pick R2, it's 10K ohms, and that makes R1 uh, two zeta squared uh, times R2, which is 1465 ohms. And then C is one over zeta omega naught R2, and again, R2 was 10K ohms, so that's 0 0.062 microfarads. Um, the second one had a zeta, this should be zeta two of uh, uh, 1.848, uh, so uh, uh, two zeta two of 1.848 so zeta 2 is 0.924 the omega 0 is 9040 again we pick r2 is 10k ohms r1 is now 0.924 squared times r2 so it's 8500 ohms 8550 ohms and then c1 again 1 over zeta omega naught r2 is 0.012 microfarads and we still have to have the gain stage of 0.7 7.07 so here's the circuit. Here's the first sound and key uh, unity gain stage. Uh, R2 is 10K ohms, and there's the R1 we got, and there's the two Cs we got. Here's the second sound and key unity gain stage. R2 is 10K ohms, R1, 8,500 ohms, uh, uh, and then a 0.012 microfarads for the Cs. And then here's the third stage, which is just a gain of 7.07. .07. There's a big resistor there just to keep from hooking the electronics of the out, output of that op amp to the electronics of the input of this op amp. It just gives it something in case there's a voltage difference there. There's a place for some current to flow, but it's, uh, uh, it's not really doing much work because there's not going to be much current to flow. So that's high pass filter design. Now for band pass and band stop filters. We're not really going to go into this. You're going to do some of this on the homework and on the project. But to design a wideband bandpass filter, you just need to have the high pass uh, filter on the left side, uh, giving you the roll off towards lower frequencies, and a low pass filter on the high frequency side, giving you roll off for higher frequencies. And then the product of the, the gain in the pass band will be the gain of those two uh, filters. You have to be a little careful there. You can't you can't necessarily use a Chebyshev for both the, uh, of those because you're going to have the interacting ripple from the two different filters and you may end up with a, a more attenuation uh, than you mean. If you're trying to keep everything within uh, 3dB of the uh, desired gain, uh, then you need you could only really use one Chebyshev for that uh, unless you did some uh, analysis uh, to show that you didn't uh, have a lower gain by having the two ripples intersect. Uh, to do a, a band stop filter, you're going to put a high pass and a low pass in parallel, and you would have your low pass be the lower, lower, the one with the lower frequency corner filter. Uh, so as frequencies get higher than that, uh, then they get attenuated by both the high pass and the low pass. And now the high pass has a higher corner frequency. So as frequencies continue to get higher, then eventually they start passing through the high pass filter. So you again, you'll have high and uh, low cutoff frequencies and uh, stop band frequencies. Uh, again, we'll play with those on the homework. It's pretty uh, uh, simple once you get the idea. There's also some ways to build some narrowband bandpass filters, and we'll look at that too. Um, so to summarize, um, we did the high-pass sound and key circuit uh, with both equal element and unity gain design methods. We talked about what a high-pass filter specification looks like and did an example of a Butterworth high-pass and a Chebyshev uh, high-pass. And then we really talked really briefly about bandpass and bandstop filters. What's up next? One more thing, that's transformers, a completely different topic from filter design, and that'll wrap out the class. So this has been E300 Linear Circuit Analysis 2, Module 4, Video 3, High Pass and Band Pass Filter Design.